Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over an open Ultra League team, the same one we used last season, except with a little bit of a twist. We've subbed our safe swap from Snorlax into Greedent. Greedent's going to have a lot better play against uh, some of the some of the Mon than uh, Snorlax does, since Snorlax uh, has to get all the way up to that Earthquake. And uh, yeah, but it's a little bit different too, uh, because we're not all in against the Steel types as much uh, but that's okay because we have talent flame and scrafty if you haven't go ahead and sub to the channel and let's go ahead and get into the games i'm just going to show one set here um yeah obviously venusaur here this this game's <laughs> it's over before it started venusaur into umbreon against scrafty uh we throw the pup here and uh yeah we're just going to farm this umbreon all the way down um okay Foul play. Uh, probably a Psychic variant. Don't run Psychic on your Umbreons. Just letting you know. Um, really doesn't have a lot of play in Open Ultra League, especially since there really aren't a lot of fighters, uh, which is why Greed another reason why Greedent uh, does so well. All right, first lead, uh, Lapras here. I like to go for two uh, Incinerates, and then um, that way I have some energy later on in the game. And then I'm coming into Greedent here. Greedent's going to be able to spam against this Lapras. But this Lapras also got a lot of moves off as well. Got four um, Ice Shards into the Talon Flame. So had a full surf of extra energy here. But you know what? Um, the whole point of Greedent is that we are able to spam. Also, our Fast Attack of Bullet Seed is no slouch either. It is super effective against this Lapras, even though it's not doing very much damage. Since it's a high energy move, not very high damage move. Um... We're going to be able to... Uh, it's still doing something, though, at least being super effective. Going to do a little bit of damage. Enough to uh, shield and farm this down, for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, which is nice. We'll probably get three more bullet seeds here. Two, three... Oh my god, we got four. Nice. Uh, the perfect farm down. I've got a crunch now and a body slam. They end up coming in with Swampert. This is something you see a lot, actually, in Open Ultra. You may not... Uh, think about it, but a lot of teams are double water front and back uh, because the waters in Ultra League are a little bit different, you know. So there's like Gyarados, which has a flying type associated with it. There's um, Empoleon with the steel type, Lapras with the ice type. You know, it's their waters, but they're different. So yeah, they end up coming in with a Swampert here, and I've already got I've already gotten through the Swampert and the uh lapras so i imagine this is going to be a giratina in the back yep so i think oxford u uh made this team like f i don't know how many seasons ago like four or five seasons ago so definitely seeing that team here i want to save my shields for talent flame if i can plus this isn't really going to affect scrafty too much uh, i want to go for this next foul play and um i'll either let it hit or switch instantly um they don't have very much farm here so i'm going to go ahead and switch um, I want to throw Brave Bird after they throw, uh, but since they haven't thrown yet, you know what? I'm gonna go for the I'm gonna go for the pump up here, and then get the, in, get them into Brave Bird range when I get to it. So no shield here. I don't have a debuff. Plus I want to probably save the shield for Scrafty if I can, not Scrafty for uh, their Swampert, and he ends up throwing here as well. Not gonna shield this. Uh, again, I'm saving this shield for the Swampert. Uh, Swampert's not really gonna be able to farm me down with Mudshot. Uh, even though we are double debuffed on defense. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and go for this flame charge. And you know what? If he throws the move, whatever. I probably wouldn't shield it and let just Scrafty just farm it down. All right, game three. Umbreon lead, you know, this is not a bad lead, but it's also not great. It's something that I definitely want to get out of. So I think I'll go for a Brave Bird and dip. Um, I decide to go all the way up to 100 energy because they're not throwing. So, you know, I don't want to get caught on a CMP and then end up taking extra damage. Um, they sneak one Snarl in through here, which means they will have another d Dark Pulse, actually. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to be able to switch out of that in the middle. So, no worries with that. And then I don't care what happens to Greedent here. Sort of the same as the last video. Just like Greedent tank everything. Um, he's there as just like a stopgap. Um, so, oh man, so the tough part here is the fact that he's showing me a charmer means there could be another charmer in the back, which would absolutely suck, <laughs> but, um, I think I remember this game and I think I end up losing this. 
which sucks. Uh, I really want to go for switch. Here. Well, I end up not going for switch here because I was like, I can just take this move, farm up on uh, Talon Flame. But you know what? Switch would have been absolutely amazing here. Um, yeah, I think we do end up shielding this next move from Umbreon. But at this point, it's all just too much. Um, even even the snuck in incinerate here. Um, we're never going to get another chance to use this shield because I think they're just going to be able to farm us all the way down here on the Cliff Fable. The thing, so one thing about Incinerate versus Charm is it's a five turn move versus a three turn move. There's really no way for you to get good rate on this. So I try to transfer one of the, one of the, uh, what's it called? One of the charms over to Scrafty just to maybe give Talonflame a little bit more HP here. But as you're going to see later, I'm actually not going to be able to make it to a move anyways, uh, which is absolutely, that sucks. <laughs> I guess if I knew everything in the game at the very beginning, which you never know if someone's going to be running double charm or not, I could have just shielded the talent flame at the very beginning, but that would be such a weird call I'd have to make. Also, uh, Obstagoon, another um, lead that sometimes has double fairy in the back. So that's something you have to be careful of, but I also am fine taking one hit. And, um, yeah, they're not throwing for a while. That's interesting. I always take the first one and then shield the second one in case they get the boost. But I got hyper beamed. <laughs> I got hyper beamed out of, uh, don't worry, guys. We, we, uh, we still win this one, right? Okay, Cresselia with shields. I'm okay with this. Greedent is actually really good against Cresselia. Um, Scrafty, not as much, but we do have a shield advantage, and you know, I decided to come into here see if he ends up throwing energy. If he does throw energy into this Greedent, that's great for me. Um, it means that it's going to have an energy disadvantage later against my Scrafty, which is all you really want against Scrafty versus Cresselia matchup. Plus, them staying in for these crunches, you know, obviously it's going to be super effective. That's pretty great for me. Uh, they end up coming with Drift Blims, so yeah, they're full backline, bad against Scrafty. I mean, bad against Dark, not necessarily Scrafty. I think actually both of them beat Scrafty in the one shield. But, um, you know, with all these shields, Greedent's actually insane against both of these mons. So he's obviously going to go straight Icy Wind. Shadow Ball does nothing. We double resist it being a uh, normal type. So I'm um, just going to throw these super effective crunches, even though they don't have stab, and I've already reduced once. And now what I might do is let him throw one more time and then switch into Scrafty. Uh, I might go for a Body Slam and then a switch. Maybe I should have just gone Crunch, but I want to throw the Body Slam here so that I can come in with Scrafty and come up with a farm down. Uh, but it ends up being actually a little too much farm uh, for me to get with the counters being uh, double resisted. Or Ghost Resist, right? Uh, yeah. In fact, triple resisted? I guess counters triple resisted, so yeah. Um, I know I'm just going to get flack in the comments for that. I'm not very good at the typings. But the Cresselia is so low anyways that even though we are reduced in our attack by one, we are still able to get this uh, damage off against the Cresselia. Or it will be enough to KO the Cresselia from this point, obviously. Uh, oh, I end up letting it go. Very interesting. I mean, it's never going to be able to farm down the Greedent, so I guess it's whatever. Plus, I still have the shield, and I think that even a bullet seed being resisted and very low damage is going to be able to KO this Drift Limb. Yep, nice. All right, this is the last game of the set, and it looks long. Uh, okay, really good lead for us here. Um, we can just go straight for the Flame Charge. Ends up being a Gyarados. I decide to stay in for one Brave Bird, try to get that shield advantage early, then definitely switch into Greedent, knowing that I can shield if I need to and just be able to spam these Body Slams into Gyarados, which Gyarados is obviously very squishy, but it has high damage with the Dragon Breaths. Um, it has Aqua Tail Crunch. Maybe it has a big move, but I would assume it has Aqua Tail and Crunch. Uh, goes for the Crunch, trying to get the debuff. Um, if it debuffs, things get really bad for me because the Dragon Breaths are going to be doing so much. Uh, but does not get the debuff here. I end up going for the second body slam before they can get the next one off. And um, I'm probably going to shield this so that I can go for a farm down. It is Bullet Seed is neutral, and like I said, Gyarados is very squishy. So might be able to do, take it out, and I am with a huge energy advantage here. They do come back in with Club Fable. Um, gonna be able to throw this body slam, which obviously is pretty nice. Actually, probably gonna get to a second body slam here. Greedent's very, um, very bulky, as the last video title said. And, uh, yeah. 
They end up switching to the Swampert. I come in straight away with uh, <laughs> Scrafty. And, uh, oh my gosh, I think, oh my gosh, they go for the Earthquake. Nice. And they get the extra move in. Things aren't great. And I think they end up not shielding this. So everything went wrong there for the last little bit. But um, I think I can shield this, get the pup, and five more counters. I think their next Hydro Cannon is a five count. Um, and I think they win CMP, which obviously that's not great. But uh, we'll, we will be able to get it low. And the ingredient does have the Bullet Seed, like I said before, which is going to be double super effective against Swampert. And... Um, I shouldn't be waiting the timer out like this because they switched before me. I couldn't get more hits in on this Swampert. They switch, I switch, and that should be it. Um, they're going to have to use a move on on Swampert to take out this Talonflame. And Talonflame is going to be doing a lot of damage with the Incinerate since I'm now one-upped. Um, that they're probably going to have to throw pretty soon. And I think I'm actually at the Body Slam as well. And they're definitely not at two Hydro Cannons, so that's... GG, yeah. All right, so this team still works in Open Ultra. The only thing I will say is it does seem like there's a lot more water in Open Ultra right now. So Talonflame, uh, while it's obviously insanely good against the legendaries, it's the non-legendaries that you're most scared of now. And I think I said this near the end of last season uh, during the last Ultra League. Um, Open Ultra League isn't really about the legendaries anymore it's kind of the xls have become a little bigger than the legendaries so it's something that um it i don't know it's weird because you still see cresselia everywhere obviously grass knot is going to be super effective against a lot of the xls that are coming in so those being polytoed um jellicent etc um but jellicent has shadow ball which obviously is going to be interesting but uh swampert's still very good uh it's always been probably the best safe swap in ultra league um, yeah, so I would say use Talonflame if you run into a lot of counters, like a lot of water, I mean, maybe you can switch it up, but I definitely wouldn't bring grass. Uh, if you notice, some people did bring grass in these videos. Uh, I'm not sure grass is the way Venusaur. Yeah, it has some great matchups, but if you don't get aligned right, it's just kind of doesn't do very much. Whereas Swampert, when it doesn't get aligned right, it still has Earthquake for that coverage. And, uh, that still does a lot of damage to the Giratinas and, uh, yeah. So... Uh, thank you so much for your support here on YouTube, and uh, again, uh, pretty much just the same team we used last season, except no no Snorlax, we're using the XL Greedent, and yeah, definitely use it. I did see Tho Technical using the team as well, and he did very well uh, as well. It was weird to say well twice there, but uh, yeah, he did very well with it as, as well, and definitely you should check him out. He'll probably post a video about it, and uh, yeah, definitely watch that. The thing about watching more and more videos on YouTube doesn't necessarily have to be from here, but, um, is you kind of get your sets in, you kind of get the reps in with the team without even playing it. Cause you're watching someone else play it. So you start learning those matchups without sacrificing your own, uh, wins and losses inside of, uh, inside of your five sets for the day or whatever. Anyways, this video has gone so long. Uh, thank you so much for the support here on YouTube again, and I'll see you in the next one.